a lack of opportunities. Chris Williamson, Chris Williams uh, summarized it perfectly, he called it the high heels effect. In the last 40 years, more women have graduated from college than men, and they're not interested in mating with non-college grads. They now own more homes, single women, than single men. So what you have is women say they won't date anyone shorter than them, 50% of them. Effectively, what you have metaphorically over the last 40 years is women have been getting taller and taller, and men have been getting shorter and shorter. How many of us have said, I know a ton of great single women, they can't find a date? That's not true. They can't. I've never said that. I don't know any great single woman. <laughs> All the great women in my life are married. They got married before they turned 23. They have children. They live in life. Dark says, this may be anecdotal, but as a straight white male in Australia, after watching my dad go through two divorces and my brother go through one, I can't take marriage seriously. In Australia, the mainstream media won't address this. Yeah, no, these guys won't address it either. That divorces, they want everything to be status quo. Everything should stay the same, except men should pony up and start marrying 35-year-old ex-thoughts. There's no such thing as an ex-thought. Once you're a thought... Your thought for life, it's like the mark of shame the Arbiter got. Once you get reamed, once you write the CC, that changes your soul. Permanently. You can't pray it away. Impossible. You are defunct, you are not good for marriage. Especially. Now, if there was a system where if you marry a woman, and then she wants to divorce you, and she gets nothing, and the man keeps the kids, I'd be more um, amenable to men marrying non-virgins. But in this current system, she takes half of your assets, she gets alimony, she gets the kids, she gets child support. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. They're practice. Non-virgin women are equivalent to practice. Brittany Venti is practice. Christy Mayer is practice. All the women on Simpcast are practice. Not a single virgin there. They are practice. That's all, that, that's all they're worth. I'm not building a family with somebody who is statistically inclined to destroy it. I'm not interested in that. I care about my children. I love my children. My children that don't even exist yet. I love them so much. I am not going to give them a mother who goes on social media who meets with their friends at Wine Wednesday and their friends and social media say, you can do better. Get a divorce. No. F Screw that. Let the simps take care of them. Let Muhammad and Abdul take care of them. Let Enrique and Ramos from south of the border take care of them. I am not going to save those hoes. Don't save those hosts. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Great lyrics. Can't find a date. They can't find a man they find economically or emotionally viable. If we don't make a massive investment in young people and make more economically and emotionally viable men, we're going to see a lack of household formation. We're going to see a decline in the middle class. And we're going to see, quite frankly, just a lot of young men who are terrible citizens. Yeah, they don't pay taxes. Look at the black community. What's happened to the black community is the black community is stage, is terminal feminism, really. Women have tons of kids, different daddies, violence, gangs, thugs, random men raising your son. And are they their sons? No. So are they going to have their best interests at heart? No. There's a thing in Chicago where um, game bangers will shoot their ops and then give the gun to like a 13-year-old kid and tell him to run away. And so the cops show up, 13-year-old kid has a gun, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, a dad wouldn't do that. And the black men who are I don't want to say intelligent. Uh, they chose the path away from feminism. Because there's black kids 
who are bastards, no father. They grew up, they see the disaster, and they're coherent enough to not follow that path. A lot of them are leaving. I don't want, it's not worth it. And white America is kind of seeing the same thing. They see white women destroying white families. They go, this is bullshit. This isn't worth it. And so white guys are leaving too. Good luck, boomer boys. Good luck. So is the answer to fix this economically and who will champion this conversation? You, you felt obliged to compliment me at the outset because we had engaged on this a year ago and here I am revisiting it. And I read into that the fact that you think that it's politically incorrect even to have this dialogue. When you're seen as advocating for men because of the 300,000 year head start we've had, it seems somehow as anti-female. There's a lot of very unfortunate misogyny on. 300,000 year head start. I'm sorry, Scott Galloway, professor of simping at NYU. How did men have a head start over women when they were 99.999% of combat deaths? In the last 300,000 years. Workplace accidents. Virtually all men. Oh. How many people got castrated in history? Oh, they're like basically. I would say it's like. 9.99999. I've never heard an incident. Of a woman being castrated. In, in history. The closest I got was the. Um, the. Unclean. The. Uh unwanted, whatever, uh, females in uh, Mustache Man Germany who got sterilized. Let's be generous. 10,000, 100,000. Let's say 100,000. How many black African men got trafficked to the Middle East and had their gonads cut off so they could be eunuchs? You guys know it was so, eunuchs were wanted so badly by the Shahs, by the caliphates, that the process of making a young black boy into a eunuch, it was like, I think it was like 60% of them would just die. And they still did it. Now, if you didn't get, you know, the only blacks that, the only black slaves that didn't get castrated, they were the slave armies because they needed their, to, uh, their gonads to get stronger, to fight, to die for their masters. Millions? But we don't talk about that. But we don't talk about how 300,000 years men were castrated. In Europe, they castrate men as a punishment. You spoke bad against the Pope, you get castrated. A king didn't like you, you got castrated. But these two bald simps go, you know, the men had a 300,000 year head start. Take your simp ideology, roll it up in the cardboard tube you get paper towel from and stick it all the way up your rectum until you don't need a colonoscopy next year, you old boomer boy simp. I am trying so hard to not cuss right now. 300,000 year head start. Put a cap on. You got cap, put a cap on. I don't want to see your bald head. Online that is masquerading as being pro-men. A lot of TikTok celebrities who talk about advocating for men, it's just thinly veiled misogyny. What do we need? We need more freshman seats in colleges. We need a massive investment in vocational training. We need to figure out a way to get more permitting for housing so young people can afford housing. We need to recognize our economic policies, literally allocate wealth from young people to old people. The percentage of wealth that young people control under the age of 40 has been cut from 12% to 6%. These are concerted, deliberate decisions. We did away with the child tax credit. We don't want to make it any easier for people to have kids, but seniors just got their largest cost of living adjustment increase in history. We have made the decision to make it harder and more expensive for people to find each other, for people to mate, and for people to have children. And without children... Poor people have the most kids in the United States. Poor women, bank thugs, bank crackheads, they have kids and they get their lifestyle paid for by single young men. It's not a, it's not a, 
economic thing. They've tried this in Hungary. They've tried this in Japan. They started paying women to have kids. Their birth rates are still decreasing. It's a cultural thing. It's a uh, feminism thing. But you're not going to touch that because you're, you're, you're both leftist feminist simps and you cannot stand against feminism. So you'll just blame young men and say, if we have more leftist economic policy, men will start reproducing more. What is the end goal of leftism? What's the most leftist government? Communism. What's the biggest communist country on the planet right now? China. China is also having a fertility rate collapse. So keep coping, CNN boomers. If we just become more leftist, the problems will go away. Looks towards China. Nah, nah, nah. Those problems are getting worse. But yeah, I'm not sure they're smart enough. I mean, the dude's a professor of marketing. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, I respect marketing, but, you know, he's not a professor of statistics. He's not a hard science professor. If you're a professor, if you're a PhD, and you don't have it in um, engineering, computer science, statistics, chemistry, physics, biology, one of those fields. I just don't care about your qualifications, especially if you're on CNN, especially if you're on CNN. And we turn into Japan and Italy, and that is we go into population decline and our economy goes into, decl into decline. We are about to become a society. By the turn of the century, there will be eight times as many people over the age of 60 and half as many kids under the age of five. Nursery schools will become these strange situations with old people staring through fences at these creatures they don't see in the wild called children. Is this the world we want? Do we want a lack of kids? Do we want a lack of ability to create households? The do I want a world where my progeny control the majority of the political power? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I want a world where thoughts are naturally selected against? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I want a world where seething boomers are put into nursing homes where they're getting taken care of by the third warders they voted to import? And by taken care of, I mean a pillow's put on their face? It's unfortunate. I can't say I want that, but it's kind of like what they deserve. Like, what do you mean? You voted for it, yet you didn't, you didn't have strong families, and this is happening? I'm not saving you. I'm not saving you. I'm saving my family. I'm saving my children. I'm saving my wife. I'm not going to save unrelated boomers that blame men for everything. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. The happiest, most proper, prosperous, most purposeful people in America are middle class families. And we have made a concerted decision to punch it in the gut and make it harder for that type of family formation. And we're going to lose prosperity and we're going to lose. Talk about a Freudian slip. The most profitable people are middle class families, a.k.a. the most profitable families are men who sacrifice everything for their families. So us boys at the top can take off 40% food taxes. I'm not interested. Enjoy your declining society. I'm not part of your society. I'm different. I remove myself from it. 